Good morning. Good morning. That sounds good. Um, I opened Mr. Chapman's email on April 3rd with mixed emotions on my face as I read that the first senior speakers were about 18 hours ahead of when I saw the email. I looked at my calendar to figure out I had exactly 25 days until my own speech. Naturally, the first thing I did was think of ways that I could move my date because I was unsure how to write a good speech in three weeks that is ultimately a culmination of my Brooks career. This internal battle I was facing paused when I realized I had the dates wrong and wasn't speaking on the 28th, but instead on May 2nd. While it was only four days later, in my head I had a lot more time, so I put my speech on hold until three days ago. <laughs> Looking at the calendar made me feel nostalgic for the nights in late 2018 where all the freshman girls would squish together in the Gardner Common Room after two hours of laughing in the science forum due to none of the freshmen achieving the then 92 GPA required to get out of study hall. In the spring mornings of 2019, we were excited to enjoy our first Brooks spring, what most people call the best time of year here. Coming back to campus after COVID in the fall of 2020 and moving into the extremely luxurious mansion felt so surreal. Though we were in a different time, being at Brooks was a constant and I promised not to take a single second for granted. In a way, these days feel like yesterday because time has flown and is now spring of 2022. While my stomach originally turned at the look of graduation being so close, this feeling has dissipated as I realized I've taken advantage of nearly every day that I've had here, or at least I've tried to. I've grown to love it here from the very beginning that the thought of leaving scared me. It only became more real as I realized how rapidly our time here is winding down. And today, as Mr. Packard said, I'm giving my speech four weeks to the date of our graduation. It has taken me a long time to figure out what I wanted to write about. Almost four years this past spring, which was the first time I heard a senior speech as a freshman. There have been so many stories I've experienced and lessons that I've learned that I could share. A chunk of the reason that I'm up here today is to tell freshman me that I did it, and I won't walk out after the last senior speech regretting that I didn't give my own. When I got to Brooks, I was 14 years old and I was a seasoned public school attendee. For the entirety of my middle school career, I woke up and got ready for school to get on a bus at 6.50 every morning. I had little idea of what boarding school was, and the only thing I could compare it to was my summer camp. My friends are probably laughing at me right now, saying something along the lines of, I knew she was going to bring up camp. <laughs> Brooks ranked nearly dead bottom of the seven independent schools I applied to, but when April 10th came, it was the best fit. Coming to Brooks, I didn't know what I was signing up for, aside from hopefully making better friends and having a more challenging academic experience. I knew the opportunities here would be better, but at this time it didn't really mean much, as it doesn't to most freshmen. I didn't know how much the people here would change my life, or just how much one place could mean to 14-year-old me. Getting ready to move in in August of 2018, I had no fears about being away from home. After all, I had gone to camp, where I would gladly spend two weeks in a wooden cabin that could fall down at any moment. I was prepared for a similar experience because this was all I knew except hopefully the dorms would be a little more recently updated than these cabins, which still has yet to be proven. <laughs> However, my first month at Brooks was not what I thought it would be. My homesickness kept holding me back from many experiences and giving me an extremely difficult time. There was a girl, who was me, sitting outside of Gardner, crying on the phone to her mom. That's not me anymore. And while this only lasted for a small period of time, I still compare it to who I am now. My personal growth at Brooks has been exhibited through my interactions with the community. I've always been a people person, wanting to spend all day with my friends until my eyes couldn't stay open anymore. Even on campus last year, where we could barely leave the mansion due to an outbreak, I was trapped with my friends. These, this trust that I've made for my friends, my teachers, faculty, and the environment here has allowed me to thrive and embrace Brooks. I'm constantly surrounded by these people. These are people who care enough about me to stop and say, hi, how are you on Main Street? Or if I'm crying, are you okay? This trust and being comfortable and throwing myself into fully being a Brooksian, a friend and a student is what has allowed me to become comfortable crying in public. While crying is definitely not what I envisioned myself talking about in my senior speech, there's just so much to say because of how often it occurs. <laughs> if you've never seen me crying around campus, I feel like you definitely haven't seen me much. It's a very common occurrence. <laughs> I would say it happens almost as much as I fall, and I find that I am a lot more susceptible to falling than the average Brooks student, <laughs> seeing as how I ate it two days in a row last week the same way as I was ripsticking in the locker room, untouched by another person, like literally zero reason for me to be on the ground. 
I was making a mental checklist last night thinking about how many public places I've cried, and I think the only two I haven't has been in the squash courts and the boathouse, both of which I'm not a frequent visitor to. My personal favorites are the Link, Main Street, the Dining Hall, especially, as Maddie sent me a one year ago today of me sobbing in the dining hall, <laughs> and sports practice. I will say, I can cry at almost anything with any emotion, positive or negative. Let's put it this way. How many people in the room have cried while getting from pose to? <laughs> That's what I thought. One chapel a few months ago, I walked out crying. For whatever reason, I was unable to pinpoint, and I couldn't stop before I got to my next class. I got to anatomy, safe from the doghouse, to Mrs. H asking what was wrong. When I answered laughing, that I didn't really know or have a direct answer, she responded with a, I feel like this happens to you a lot. <laughs> Similarly, my coaches and dorm parents have come to the same conclusion, but the comforting asks of are you okay have not faded. Typically, there's not really a deep reason for when I'm crying around campus. It can be assumed that it's about a math test or a bad grade, but this was more of a pre-senior spring issue because I've now given up ho my hopes of success in Kim McDowell's AB Cal class. One of my biggest weaknesses is seeing other people cry, which can typically be a cause of tears of my own. A third would be my nostalgic self worrying about time going by too quickly. Out of the rest of my friends in our grade, I feel like I'm one of the most outwardly expressive people when it comes to my feelings about leaving Brooks, a lot of the time including tears. While most people have spent the past year getting prepared for and excited for graduation, I have spent time trying to slow down, absorb every moment, and take nothing here for granted. Two weeks ago, Mr. Packard asked our self-class how ready we were to graduate on a scale from one to 10. One being, tie me to a tree so I can die here, and 10 being, get me out right now, I can't stay another day. My answer of barely a five stood out from the rest of the class as people said nines, tens, eight and a halfs, and so on. It was clear to me that I had some preparation to be doing. High school reflection is a commonality between soon to graduate seniors, and I've been doing a good deal of it for almost the whole year. But I've spent a lot of time recently reflecting on my relationships that have, made, that have been made over the past four years. The only proper way to start reflecting on senior years from the beginning. On the first day of school this fall, we began outside, as COVID cautious Brooksians do, on the girls' third soccer field, one of Mr. Packard's favorite spots on campus. While it wasn't listed in this year's Chipotle challenge, I found an email from Mr. Packard dated from October 11th, 2018, just about five weeks into my own Brooks experience. It, the, it described the Chipotle challenge and listed the following. Go to the corner of the girls' third soccer field closest to the stone wall. Look at the majestic view of the lake between the trees and take a picture of your group with the lake and those trees in the background. The only people who can fact check this email are four-year seniors and faculty, but it's true. Anyways, our first chapel of the year began at this spot. A couple hundred white chairs, a makeshift podium, and a good amount of people standing in the back. As I went to sit with my advisory, I stood at the back for a minute just to take it all in. I'm sure none of you will be surprised by this next sentence, but sure enough, I was crying. <laughs> there were happy tears, some I'm actually a senior tears, and some where am I going to college tears. I was smiling, but still crying. I was so excited to be back at school, to have a full season for the first time in 18 months, and to have a som somewhat normal year. Sharps brought it up in my semester report card and said, it was no surprise to see me to me to see you with tears in your eyes before our first school gathering. I guess I just can't surprise anyone anymore. <laughs> I was crying because of how much I love it here and I was unprepared for how quickly this year was about to go by. While everyone in this room has missed out on countless things due to COVID and its impacts, our grades suffered immensely as we transitioned into being upperclassmen. The only full year that our grade has had here was freshman year, so part of me feels like I still have so much more time to go. It's been difficult to watch so much of our time here be robbed, which is why I care so much to, about the time we actually get to enjoy. At the same time, in just four years, we've gone through so much as a school and in our personal lives that change is needed and deserved. For a while now, my friends have called me a walking Brooks campaign, saying that I have a weird obsession with it here. <laughs> or if any of you saw Maddie's viral TikTok last year, this is ultimately where I will peak and never recover from. <laughs> While I don't necessarily believe that one's true, and I hope it's not, the other 30,000 views might disagree. <laughs> For as long as I can remember, I've been a fan of almost anything Brooks that typically other students aren't, giving me this title of a Brooks campaign. Two of the most commonly brought up is my strong advocacy for seated lunches in Saturday school. 
These are things that have brought me closer to the community, and while people might disagree with me, I think it's worth it. My friends also have a tendency to make fun of me for saying hi to everyone I walk past, maybe a little bit too eagerly. <laughs> they point out to me that I'm somehow always trying to talk to someone else, making getting to class a lot more of a drag. This is blamed on my obsession with the Brooks, which worries them about how I'm going to survive anywhere else. To me, it's part of how I define Brooks, and I can say that my experience here has been that much greater because of it. Last week, we had a meeting with the soccer team. I wondered if I should even go, because obviously I won't be here in the fall. After deciding on it, I sat in the team room on the white chairs next to Socko, where Carrie was standing, and everyone else was sitting on the green built-in benches. I had always sat in these chairs in our meetings in the fall, except then I always sat with Caroline. As Carrie told us that she would not be returning to Brooks next year, I didn't really know how to react. I was sad, and I was sad for the team, but it didn't affect me as much as everyone else because she was leaving with me, and I wouldn't be here without her. Despite the fact that I am leaving, seeing everyone else's distraught faces brought me to tears, to a point where I cried for the rest of the day. <laughs> Shocker. Looking at the team that I had been a leader of just over five months ago made me realize my time this year has gone by so quickly. As the only senior on the team, I formed the tightest of bonds with all 20 girls, making it that much harder for me to say goodbye. My original tears coming from seeing my teammates upset changed into tears for leaving them. I worry I now may be too unafraid of publicly crying at Brooks, considering I was unfazed crying wherever I went that day. Duffy showed up to film and couldn't figure out a reason to my tears, even though I was silently trying to cry in the corner. As our film session went on, everyone acknowledged the fact that I was crying. <laughs> I spent probably 20 minutes trying to cover my head and mentally run away from being in the team room. At the field, Duffy asked if I was okay, where she proceeded to ask if I was going to cry again if she kept pestering me. As imaginable, the tears began once more. In the middle of our conversation, she asked me if I had just realized how quickly this year has gone by and how in four weeks we won't be coming back. I nodded and laughed as tears fell off my cheeks. It was this conversation that sparked my thought in writing my senior speech about crying at Brooks. Being able to trust people here and knowing that things will work out how they should has allowed me to form relationships and grow with others. My path here has definitely not been linear, but it's also shaped my character. I guess this leaves a couple of good messages for the underclassmen. Embrace your time here and surround yourself with good people. Don't wish the days away. Anything could change at any time and you won't want to regret any wasted time here. By trusting those around you and fully throwing yourself into our community here, you will get the best in return. The young girl who would sneak out of Gardner to call her mommy cry without anyone knowing in early September of 2018 had no idea how throwing herself into the community here would allow for her to cry in the dining hall or in the link, supported by countless people. In reality, I am more prepared to leave Brooks than I have allowed myself to think for the past couple of months, even though some of what I've told you may say otherwise. Being vulnerable in our community brings it closer together, and by throwing myself into every single day here for the past four years, even the roughest ones, I've grown immensely as a person. To me, my crying symbolizes my time here, going to love and embrace our community. Over spring break, I was talking with my family about my experience here versus my brothers, who's a new sophomore. My mom brought up the fact that Brooks is a piece of me because now it truly is. Throwing myself into living here, going to school here, and forming relationships here has given me more than I will ever be able to give back. Brooks is a place that I will treasure for the rest of my life and so far has been the most meaningful educational experience. Thank you.